Witches. Their tale is a common one, and they are found in many shapes and forms around the world. They have commonly been seen in Christian Europe as evil women who stalk the night, flying through the air and consorting with the devil, bringing misery and misfortune to all around them. Fairy tales of old and new tell us of the danger of the witch in the woods, who lives in the depths of the forest, in perhaps an old cottage, a damp cave, or even a candy house. The witch is often portrayed as a decrepit old woman, with green or pale skin, covered with warts and marks with the power to shapeshift herself into a beautiful young woman, and she is often said to be accompanied by an animal familiar, such as a cat, a bird, or a toad. Today, there are modern tales of witches that have reinvented this image, to be more friendly or comical, and there are even groups that refer to themselves as witches, who claim to perform magic even in these modern times. Historically, witches have commonly been portrayed and associated with women. However, there have too been men sentenced for witchcraft and sorcery. Much like the rest of Europe, the Nordic region was caught up in the widespread panic and fear of witches, and their threat to Christendom during the 16th through to the 18th century. The biggest witch trials in Scandinavia occurred during the winter of 1662-63 in Vardø in northern Norway. Thirty women were trialled on the charges of practising witchcraft and consorting with the devil. Eighteen were burned alive at the stake, two were tortured to death, and one was sent to a workhouse. During the trials, there were incredible accounts of shapeshifting into cats, dogs, and birds, bewitchment of livestock, attempts of sinking ships and controlling others through spells and magic of pagan rituals and witches' sabbaths, and of drinking wine and dancing with the devil himself. Before the Christianization of Scandinavia, seers or supposed sorcerers were integral parts of the community, and often helped people and acted as a healer. It was after Christianity was introduced that these people were demonized as agents of the devil. Despite this, there was a very strong resistance, particularly in Finland, where the sorcerer tradition continued despite efforts to eradicate these practices. Alongside this, the Sami people remained unchristianized until the mid-1800s and even afterwards the Sami traditions of shamanism and magic were continued, and in some ways still are performed to this day. A story is told of a woman who lived in Nardvik in northern Norway, in 1982 known as Old Esther, who was 74 at the time. It was told that a child was once taken by their father to see their great-aunt Esther, and to see if she could help with the seemingly incurable warts on their hand. Old Esther took the child to the kitchen whilst the father waited in the living room, and there she had the child sit silently as she took their hand in hers and mouthed some indecipherable incantation as she ran her finger along the warts. The next day, they were gone. They returned to Esther to thank her some days later, bringing fresh flowers and a friendly thank you card. But upon opening the door, she said, you should not have done that. 
you should never give me thanks, and closed the door on them. The next day, the warts had returned even bigger than before. Again, they visited Great Aunt Esther, and she removed the warts in the same manner. This time, they did not return to her with their thanks, and neither did the warts return. Iceland is home to a museum dedicated to the country's deep history of sorcery and witchcraft. At the museum, the exhibit shows artifacts from previous centuries believed to be used in rituals, spells and curses, as well as other magical items. Such items include the infamous necropants. To create which, the sorcerer would get permission from a man, and after his death, exhume his body and flay the skin from the waist down to make, perhaps, the most morbid pair of breeches known to man. It was said that once these pants were put on, they would adhere to your skin, and should a stolen coin from a poor widow, and a piece of parchment with the appropriate magical sigil be placed in the scrotum, it would bring the wearer wealth. Another part of the exhibit within the museum are depictions of the demons known as the Tilberi, or Snokgud, which were summoned by witches to steal milk. Unlike in other areas, witchcraft in Iceland was a practice carried out by both men and women, and most of those trialed and sentenced for the crime were men. Despite this, these demons could only be summoned and owned by female witches. To birth such a creature, she must steal a rib from a recently buried body on the Christian day of Pentecost, or Whitsunday, which she must then wrap with stolen grey wool. This artifact she must then keep between her breasts. On the following three Sundays at Communion, she must spit the blood of Christ onto the relic, giving it life each time. After this, she must let it suckle on the inside of her thigh, which would create a witch's wart as evidence. At this point, the witch had finally brought the creature to life. The demon was said to be sent out by the witch in the darkness of the night to suck the milk from the udders of her neighbour's cows. Upon its return, it would cry out, My belly is full, mother, remove the lid of the churn, and it would proceed to vomit the stolen milk into her butter churn. A similar creature is found in Scandinavian folklore, with many names, most commonly known as Biada in Swedish, and is sometimes referred to as the Troll Cat, or the Milk Hare. This creature was used by a witch to steal milk from her neighbour's cows, much like the Icelandic Tilberi. In Scandinavia, the creature resembled a cat, a hare, a bird, or simply a ball of wool. The records from a trial in Sørdalla in Helsingland on the 15th of January 1597 contained the ritual supposedly used by the witches to create such a creature. It was said that they used blood, butter, metal from church bells, earth, ashes of their intended victims' window frames, and, to top it all off, a live snake. Stories such as this are common, especially throughout the centuries in which witches were hunted, trialed, and sentenced. Witchcraft has said to be used to help as well as harm people, and even today there are stories of things which can't quite be explained. And there are many people, especially from older generations, who are still very superstitious on this particular topic. 
It seems that each family has some story of mystical men and women, helping or cursing someone that they know. And each small town or area has stories of a man or woman, rumoured to have powers or knowledge of an unknown source. It is no doubt that shamans and pagans throughout the history of the Nordic region have engaged in what we today would call witchcraft. But we will never know the true nature of the supposed power and knowledge held by these individuals, or how much the fiction of these tales strays from the fact. This was the ninth installment of Tales from the North, a weekly series on Nordic folklore, myths, and legends. This series is written and created by me, Equinox, and you can find credits below in the description. Thanks for watching. I'm resuming normal scheduling as of this week, and I'll be back next week with a new video introducing and exploring the magical world of Nordic folklore.